The Firebird and Princess Vasilisa. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there was an almighty king named Lord Don Clay. The king had an archer, and I was his fellow horse. We were both brave warriors, ready to set out on our daily course. We rode off into the forest, searching for a hunt, but soon spotted something glowing. It resembled a lunt. Ooh, what is that, a wing? No, it's a firebird's feather. I must bring it to the king. I warned the archer. The feather is not a good idea to keep. But little did he know that he'd run back to me and weep. Master, what is wrong? Why such heavy tears? The king demands I bring him the firebird, or he will end my ears. Master, ask the king for a hundred bags of corn. This will help you catch the firebird, so you will no longer be scorned. We set out to the sea, and as I roamed free, Master hid behind a tree. He caught it by the wing, then presented it to the king. Finally rewarded, but that's not the only thing. The king wanted more, even after Master was paid. He demanded the princess be brought as his maid. The archer ran back to me weeping, but I already knew what this meant. I told him to ask the king for food, wine, and a golden top tent. So we headed off to fetch Princess Vasilisa at the end of the earth. Master would woo her with wine and riches, and when she slept, we'd bring her back on my girth. Lord Don Clay was filled with joy. Bringing him the princess was like seeing a kid with a new toy. Thus did not last long, because when the princess woke up, she realized she was gone. She sobbed with grief, unable to bear the distress. Princess Vasilisa said to the king, I will not marry you unless you fetch my dress. Lord Don Clay was willing to do anything for her hand in marriage, even if that meant forcing the archer back into disparage. The archer ran back to me, crying in fear. He said, this is the end. My death is near. I replied, didn't I tell you not to take the firebird's feather? But never fear, you will not serve this king forever. The dress was bound at the end of the earth and at the bottom of the sea, so the archer hopped on my saddle and we went off on a spree. Time passed by and we made it to the shore, then out burst the lobster as if it was ready for a war. I placed my hoof on the lobster's tail. Lobster, help us fetch the dress. We will crush you if you fail. The lobster asked to be spared. He was not ready to meet his grave, so he let out a roar that carried through the waves. Lobsters, big and small, rose from the sea in different shades of red. They handed us a dress, such a beautiful garment of thread. Master ran into the kingdom to give the princess her dress, but she was still unhappy, completely pressed. Princess says, I will not marry Lord Don Clay until the archer is dipped in boiling water. So the king yells, Fire up the iron cauldron, get rid of this rotter. The poor archer pleaded with Lord Don Clay, Please let me see my horse once more. And the king responded, You may do so, but be swift so I can marry this whore. Here came the archer, sobbing as hard as can be. Why do you weep, master? He replied, because I should have listened to thee. Lord Don Clay wants me to dip myself in a boiling water caldron. Oh, master, do not cry, I said, for you are not alone. I cast a spell on the archer, then the king seized him. Lord Don Clay said, throw him in the caldron to boil to his limbs. But instead the archer rose from the boiling water, as handsome as can be and the king jumped in to his death because he couldn't believe what he'd seen. Following the death of Lord Don Clay, the archer was pronounced king. He went to Princess Vasilisa and gave her the marriage ring.